and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Ruby Zoom, and in today's episode, we are going to be building a rare new species, the Lamptopus, aka a servo-driven, LED-illuminated desk lamp to bring a smile to your workstation on a daily basis. In today's video, I will be covering the origins of Lamptopus, from my initial sketch through my CAD and 3D printing, electronic schematics, troubleshooting, and final assembly. And most importantly, I will talk about all of the mistakes I made along the way, so you can learn from them, because I know I sure did. Stay tuned to see how I made this delightful little fella. Lamptopus, like most of my projects, began with a simple sketch in my notebook, completed late at night while eating a spicy mango popsicle. And while the last part might not be relevant to you, I think the spice of my popsicle contributes to the spice of my, well, color choices. After my sketch marinated for a day, I took to my CAD software to begin picturing Lamptopus in 3D. I also began to plan out the guts, aka the electronic components for my project. After my prints finished printing and my packages arrived, it was time to start building. So in building Lamptopus, I started how most electronics projects do, which is fighting with whatever wrapping there is on your wires uh, to eventually get a wire out. But basically, I began by stripping my wires and then busting out my awesome Kester flux pen. Funny thing about mailing flux is USPS thinks you are trying to burn the world down. Like buying flux online is more of an adventure than I expected. This came in a vermiculite packaging and it looked like fool's gold and it spread all over my living room floor. If you've never bought flux online and you want to experience this really fun thing to clean up, buy this pen. But also buy this pen because the flux is great and it does a really good job of prepping my NeoPixel LED ring for soldering. The next step is to grab your NeoPixel LED, flip it over and read the tiny words, which took me a long time to read because I have pretty bad eyesight. Please ignore me dabbing the flux pen over there. You know, ignore most of the technique I show in this video. I'm a hobbyist electronic enjoyer. I build things because I can. Doesn't necessarily mean I am soldering to NASA grade standards, although I have in a past life. So the next thing I did is I took my solder and I lined up the lead through the back of the NeoPixel. All is well, all is good. Olive oil is looking great in the back. The next few minutes of footage are me being stubborn about grabbing my helping hands to make this soldering process easier. Don't be me, don't be stubborn. Get your soldering helping hands and make life easier for yourself. The one thing I did though was need to find my desoldering wick because at one point during this build, I did accidentally have some solder from my lead contact one of the pads of the NeoPixel LEDs, which is not a good thing for our dear friend Lamptopus because it means there would be a connection between the LED and some random cable on the NeoPixel. So I grabbed my desoldering wick and after many minutes of struggling with my own hands, I decided to grab my soldering helping hands to make this thing easier. So here's me with my very crusty soldering iron tip going in, adding some leads to the NeoPixel ring. This particular NeoPixel ring and my use case only required the use of three leads, power ground and communication line, or in this case, be in, because I was sending data to the NeoPixel. Here I go to prepare to tin my wire. Fun fact, I have destroyed a lot of Arduinos because I soldered things in the wrong place because I can't see the font because it's too small. I think I will need some of those magnifying glasses sooner than I would like to admit. So now I'm getting the third lead attached to the NeoPixel. This is in preparation for adding it to Lamptopus. Woo, we did a good job. We got everything soldered. Give yourself a thumbs up. So out comes a shiny new Arduino. I love the stickers. Here is me looking at a beautiful Arduino Nano before realizing that every time I try to use an Arduino Nano, I usually bust it, either because I drop it or shock it. And what you're seeing now is the few moments of um, glee, like a child on Christmas morning with a brand new toy before it inevitably gets dropped in a puddle, that puddle being me 
breaking it, which did happen in this video. You will see that we do transition over to an Arduino Uno, but I did start with an Arduino Nano. Anyone else an Arduino Nano Slayer in the audience? Leave a comment below. I really don't know what it is with me in these boards. So here I am following the diagram on my laptop because I do not think for myself when I do electronics projects. I only follow instructions from strangers online, but the forums are great. The strangers online are usually really helpful. Look, it did a thing. I found some code that made the Arduino go in a circle. So now it's time to take the LED light over to my workbench. Here's my DC power source and look at that. I had two main goals with Lamptopus. I wanted it to be funny and not too sad. What I mean by that, for the funny part, is I wanted this lamp to have a humorous motion to it, use some sort of electromechanical component to shake things up. And for the not too sad part, well, I wanted this project to be a good confidence builder, something that people felt like they could undertake and learn something new if they were on the beginner slash intermediate side of electronics projects like myself. In order to accomplish my first goal, aka the funny part, I turned to the SG90, a micro servo. It's lightweight, popular, easy to control, the perfect solution to make Lamptopus do a little wiggle. Don't worry, I will show the wiggling in a bit. In order to power the SG90, I wanted to incorporate a linear voltage regulator into my design, something that's cool to work with and can show off how electronics work in order to drop a nine volt battery from five volts using an appropriate heatsink to power my little motor. For my second goal of trying to make this project not too sad, I aim to keep my code and schematic relatively simple. However, uh, I sure tried to make it complicated, unintentionally. After hooking up my circuit, making sure all my grounds were connected and you know, the common traps that the foul circuit DIY hobbyists like myself. After sitting there and watching my NeoPixel LED ring and my SG90 twitch pathetically on the table, I decided to Google what was going on. My voltage and current was sufficient. There were no grounds missing. So what was going on? And sure enough, there was a known issue. God, known to who? Not known to me. The fix for the clash of these two components came in the form of Adafruit's Tico Servo Library, a nifty creation that delegates the servo's timer to the peripherals of the Arduino. And if you don't know what AVR peripherals means, don't worry, that's totally okay. I didn't either before the start of this project. Think of it like trying to write two, two haikus at once. Your brain would be jumping back and forth, not sure what to do, and it would probably hurt. But the good old one-two haiku task becomes a lot easier if you call in a friend to write one of your haikus for you. That way, you're writing two haikus at the exact same time. They didn't say how many people you had to use, so why not use a friend? That's what AVR peripherals do. So this library tells the Arduino's timer slash counter peripherals to keep track of the servo motor. Well, the main part of the Arduino keeps track of the NeoPixel lights. Huzzah! The lights and motors can coexist. For goal number two, which is turning the frown upside down on Lamptopus's face, aka my own, I found opportunities to decrease the difficulty of this project, such as using awesome open source STLs online from sites such as Thingiverse. For example, these awesome articulated legs, not mine, but they were free and online and easy to scale up and incorporate into my own design. In addition to finding STLs online to make certain aspects of my 3D modeling process simpler, I used code examples from online. Especially when using the Adafruit Tico library, I relied on examples, only having to modify them slightly to fit the use case of the Lantipus. Last, but certainly not least, I took it easy on myself in terms of soldering and cable management, AKA the world can be a cruel and harsh place. So if I want to make happy light do spinny spin with cable salad, I'm going to. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! One thing I really like about 
3D printing things and just CAD in general is seeing how many faces I can sneak into things. Like obviously Lamptopus has a very cute, distinct face, but I thought that my base plate also had a nice boxy, uncomfortable face, so I like it. And the next step was to bust out my Dremel because without fail, there is usually something that I 3D print uh, with not enough space. Here's me waving, very happy, pretending I didn't just spend 20 minutes with a Dremel trying to get a tiny piece of this print off so my Arduino could fit better. So as you can see, I designed the press fit tolerances really well. I did press in order to make it fit, so I, I even pressed again because I am an overachiever. So despite my best dremeling efforts, I still did have to chunk out more segments of my 3D printed housing. It's honestly okay to make mistakes. If you expect an electronics project to go perfectly, you are going to be very sad. I did fix the STL for the audience if you choose to make your own Lamptopus. You can also now see the Arduino Uno in the housing. Like I said, I did fry that Nano, so Lamptopus is based around an Uno, which I think worked out better because I do like the DC barrel jack. I'm showing you this footage of me really messing up these heat set inserts. So I love heat set inserts. I love them more when I tolerance the holes correctly. As you can see, they followed one of uh, middle school's most infamous dance routines. They cha-chaed real smooth and slid to the left one hop this time. If your heat set inserts are sliding around that much, they're not going to be useful. So you know what we fix that with? Double stick tape. Everything gets fixed with double stick tape. And then I thought I was being cool by putting in some zip ties to hold that piece to my servo motor. This was exciting. Here is the heat sink for my linear voltage regulator. I thought it looked like a really fun hat. It's very exciting. Everything needs a hat. That's why Lamptopus has a hat. That's why there's a hat on the wall near my right shoulder. It took me a while to get the heatsink on. I spent some time mapping out my circuit on fritzing before heading into my soldering attempts. And here you can see me soldering one of the capacitors in series with my linear voltage regulator. So here's my disaster, absolute disaster of a circuit. I'm not proud of it, but then it worked. So all was forgiven. And the final step was to shove all of that into the housing and make a delicious little circuit salad. Yum. Grab the empty skull. You're almost there, buddy. Align him with double stick tape and let him twirl in all his glory. It's perfect! And take a deep breath. You did something cool. Woo! Lamptopus. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. Seeing Lamptopus do a spin! A spinny spin and light up the lights and spread joy to the world with a tiny top hat and a kind of soulless smile. <laughs> I've adjusted the brightness of my beautiful studio light so that you have a chance to see Lamptopus in all of his glowing glory. First things first, to interact with Lamptopus, you plug in your five volt DC barrel jack into an outlet. Boom, lights, camera, what's left, action. If you desire Lamptopus to do a little bit of a wiggle for you, Go to the underside of Lamptopus, flip the switch on the 9 volt battery, which powers the servo motor, and watch him do a dance! Yay! Oh my gosh, my heart stops during that pause because I think something has ripped itself apart. All right, so <laughs> what can you do um, with, with Lamptopus? One of my favorite things to do is to stare into his empty eyes and contemplate my own existence. But you could also use Lamptopus's wiggle as something of a timer, say, I don't know, squats. Lamptopus does a wiggle, we'll start on, we'll start on the next wiggle. You get the idea, push-ups. Oh, my table doesn't like that. Lamptopus had a little mishap. Lamptopus is saying Lamptopus is done with my stuff for the night. And you know, Lamptopus, thank you for this reminder to uh, take a self-care break. You know, you can't be wiggling all night long. Well, folks, that's all we have for you today. Have you ever tried making a unique desk lamp? If so, tell me about it in the comments or on element14.com. We'll catch you next time. This has been Ruby Zoom from Element 14 Presents. Wait, wait. Do the lamp to fuss. Do the lamp to fuss.